the sun is truly amazing. From making you feel happy after going to the beach to the bronze skin of a Roman statue. And although that is what we all want, the importance of vitamin D3 is an understatement. It is involved in so many metabolic processes in the body, it is actually a hormone. And I personally believe that the lack of vitamin D3 in just about everyone on this planet is causing the large majority of health issues we are suffering from today. Why do you think people need to drink coffee every single day just to function? There is a lot of history surrounding sun worshiping from the Egyptian god of Sun Ra to Roman architects literally designing buildings oriented around how much sunlight comes into the building. Not too much history of every single person needing an IV coffee drip. But why tan outside naked? It makes you feel really good. Uh, I did a video a few months ago talking about Frankie's ball grease. Uh, I was rubbing vitamin D3 liquid supplement on my testicles. It doesn't just increase uh, your sex drive, it literally makes you feel horny on the spot. I found out about this uh, from a buddy who, who told me this story. His friend drilled a hole in the ceiling of his garage uh, to let the sunlight in. Then he would sit in a chair with his balls exposed in the sunlight. And although this is a bit dramatic, some wacko daco stuff, there seems to be merit to it after you know trying it firsthand. But there is more to vitamin D3 than being a dirty little boy or girl. Uh, I'm assuming if you were a female and you were to get sun exposure on your private parts as well, uh, you would have a similar feeling. It makes sense. The sun is out, winter's over, it's time to reproduce. It's nature telling us that there's nutrients that our body needs that are crucial for developmental stages of life. Vitamin D3 is also associated with higher birth weight, adult height. It's incredibly important for immune system function, literally involved in creating every single cell in the body. Vitamin D3 lowers your cholesterol and is associated with slower aging through the lengthening of telomeres and of course the absorption of calcium. The vitamin D3 RDA, uh, the recommended dietary allowance in the United States, uh, what the government tells us we need to prevent a deficiency is actually incorrect because it was based on a statistical error. Uh, the current RDA at 400 IU international units is a fraction what it was actually supposed to be, around 9,000 international units. This makes sense as the body can produce anywhere from 30 to 40,000 IU of vitamin D3 after being in the sun for a day. How can people believe that 400 IU is adequate when we obtain over 30,000 from the sun? This is why the calcium RDA is so high. The calcium RDA at 1,000 milligrams is impossible to achieve from any natural food. There is no food occurring in nature that would let you get a gram of calcium per day. You'd have a hard time even getting 10% of that. The reason it's so high is because we actually need vitamin D3 as well as other fat soluble vitamins to absorb calcium. So the calcium RDA being so high is kind of trying to mask a vitamin D3 as well as vitamin K2 deficiency in the general population. It's as simple as getting some sun. You literally can't absorb calcium without taking vitamin D3. In fact, you're actually going to start calcifying tissues in your body from your blood vessels to your kidneys. Uh, that's why they have a calcification test. Uh, excess calcium is probably one of the leading causes of heart disease right now. What's crazy is that people believe this and parrot it to each other. I've heard so many times that if you go out in the sun for just 15 minutes a day in the winter with only your hands and face exposed that you will get enough vitamin D3 for the day. Does that sound right? Yeah, if you want to be as unhealthy as everyone else. Now, before we try to figure out how much vitamin D3 we need, uh, we have to understand the measurements. The two most common units to measure vitamin D3 levels in the blood are nanograms per milliliter, 
that's usually used in the United States. And there's also nanomoles per liter, uh, which is used in other countries. The nanomoles measurement is 2.5 times the nanograms measurement. So if ideal levels of vitamin D3 were about 60 nanograms per milliliter, that would be the equivalent of 150 nanomoles per liter. Again, you just multiply nanograms by 2.5 to get nanomoles. Most up-to-date health authorities on vitamin D do recommend blood levels anywhere from 50 nanograms per milliliter to 75 nanograms per milliliter. And even doctors now, general practitioners, are prescribing incredibly high doses of vitamin D3 uh, just to the average patient to fix deficiencies. And this is tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of IU of vitamin D3. So when people are afraid to take more than a couple hundred IU of vitamin D3, they're never going to achieve optimal health. If you go to a doctor and get your blood work, the acceptable reference range in America is 20 nanograms per milliliter to 100 nanograms per milliliter. This doesn't really make sense because 20 nanograms per milliliter is like you haven't been in the sun for five years and you can't even get your blood levels to 100 nanograms per milliliter. So if the reference range encapsulates pretty much anywhere your vitamin D3 levels could be, why should we be using that as an indicator of health? I was tanning for three to four hours one day uh, several summers ago and I got my D3 levels tested and they were around 75 nanograms per milliliter. So I'm inclined to believe that levels between 75 and 80 are adequate for optimal health, especially if you know you live in a Mediterranean region. I am of Italian descent, so it's safe to say that the sun might have been more intense uh, compared to other parts of the world. In order for your vitamin D3 stores to get you through the winter, your blood levels actually have to be about 65 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, the way they figured this out was they looked at the blood vitamin D3 levels of nomadic indigenous groups. So they measured their blood levels after the summer, after they had sun exposure. Their blood levels were around 65. And after the winter time, their levels were between 35 and 40. So it's the natural life cycle. It's what humans are supposed to do. You know, you get through the winter, you suffer through lower nutrition, uh, spring comes back around, summer comes around, uh, the grasses start growing again, animals start foraging, humans start hunting those animals, uh, we get plenty of sunlight, we get our vitamin D3, we eat animal foods, we get fat soluble vitamins and other nutrients, and we reproduce and have beautiful, healthy children. Uh, that is what we are supposed to be doing, but I've had people come to me with levels of vitamin D3 in single digits. Uh, you know, this is a huge oversight in modern health. So there are several ways to achieve vitamin D3. Of course, you have the sun, you have supplements, tanning beds, and food. The sun is not practical for most people as it requires hours and hours of exposure at certain times of the year. Supplements don't achieve uh, the same results as the sun as there are specific metabolic benefits from being in the sun. Tanning beds don't have high enough UVB rays. Uh, these are the rays that actually give us vitamin D3. And food isn't high enough in vitamin D3 compared to what we get from the sun. In order to tan from the sun, it generally needs to be between May and August from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And this is not actually tanning and darkening your skin. This is getting vitamin D3 because the UVB rays are much higher around solar noon. Earlier in the year, around May, you can tan a little bit earlier in the day, around 10, 10.30 a.m. And later in the year, the UV index becomes higher a little bit later. So in August, you could probably start tanning around noon or 1 p.m. to get ideal UVB exposure. This has to do with the UVB to UVA ratio in the sun. So at solar noon, the UVB literally might be 20 or 25%, whereas a tanning bed usually doesn't go above 2.5 to 5% UVB rays. And since UVB gives vitamin D3 and UVA only darkens our skin, we want to be outside when the UVB is giving us vitamin D3 in the highest amount. So. If the UVB index peaks at 1 p.m., for instance, 
you would ideally tan between noon and 2 p.m. peaking at the middle of your tanning session. Uh, this is how you get the most bang for your buck. You know, if you're gonna be sitting outside for two, three hours sweating your guts out in the hot sun, you don't wanna have to be out here all day. Tanning beds are definitely better than nothing, but the time allowed in a tanning bed is limited and the UVB levels are not really giving you a lot of vitamin D3. Uh, tanning beds can definitely make your skin look good and give you a nice tan, but it's not the same health-wise as the sun. We can speculate our ancestors were in the sun for about a quarter of the year. Uh, if you can say, all right, well, we had to be outside every day to gather food, then maybe a quarter of the year the UV was high. So wearing a bathing suit on the beach on a sunny day gets you between 30,000 and 40,000 IU of vitamin D3. So if you obtain that much vitamin D3 in the sun on those days, uh, we can divide that number by four because we would only be getting that amount for one quarter of the year and assume an average of approximately 7,000 to 10,000 IU of vitamin D3 per day. Uh, that's probably ideal. That is what I use as a supplement as maintenance dosage and that is what I usually feel good doing. The amount of vitamin D3 obtained from food is insignificant compared to this. If you do manage to choke down a few pounds of mackerel or herring, which is completely disgusting, you would get a few thousand IU of vitamin D3. But keep in mind that food sources of vitamin D3 are specific to certain animals. Uh, the First Nation Alaskans, for instance, ate a lot of seal and caribou uh, whose meat had much higher levels of vitamin D3 than any food that we eat now. If you think you're getting vitamin D3 from grain-fed animals or farm-raised fish, uh, you've been misguided. You know, to say that uh, the First Nation Alaskans didn't get a lot of sun and that they were getting their vitamin D3 from food, it's correct. But the food they were consuming is drastically different than what we are consuming now. So unless you can ensure that you know, you're consuming some sort of wild caribou meat, uh, you need to get some sun for your vitamin D3. If you're worried about skin cancer, think about this. How could we obtain food if we were not out in the sun in nature, harvesting crops, hunting animals? The sun might be a catalyst for skin cancer due to modern circumstances, but by no means is it the sole cause of skin cancer. The two main concerns are high omega-6 levels causing oxidative stress and cell death, as well as a lack of nutrients and vitamins to actually heal your skin. When omega-6 levels are high, the lipids, all of the fat cells in your body, including cholesterol, literally become composed of these omega-6 fats. This is because you are what you eat. Linoleic acid is one of these omega-6 fats and it is so inflammatory to the body that your cells will literally attack it. Seeing as cholesterol is a precursor to vitamin D3 and that your cholesterol molecules can be attacked and oxidized in the bloodstream, especially when composed of linoleic acid, getting sun exposure would certainly stress cholesterol molecules as well as all cells in the body, leading to oxidative stress, cell death, ultimately resulting in skin cancer. If you remove the omega-6 in the diet, it's very likely that you have little to no chance of getting skin cancer, but everyone has high omega-6 in their diet for the most part. The other issue is lacking the nutrients needed to repair your skin. When you are in the sun, you are literally damaging your skin cells. And that's completely normal if your body can repair them. This is mostly vitamin A in the form of retinol, which occurs in animal foods predominantly in liver. And animal fats, cholesterol, protein is all important as well for building up cells. Uh, when I was younger, I had bad acne and my skin would take three, four months to heal. Now it's a matter of days. Imagine how much of an impact this has on all other tissues in the body. Even just increasing the amount of animal foods in your diet and slightly lowering your omega-6 intake has shown to allow people to tan when in the past they used to burn. There are so many anecdotes of this on the carnivore diet as well as the keto diet. If you're still worried about skin cancer, then there are so many studies you can look at. Uh, omega fatty acid ratios and cancer, uh, vitamin A for cancer therapy. Uh, there's data before the 1980s 
showing that sunscreen actually has a higher risk for skin cancer than not using sunscreen. How is it possible that we should avoid the sun when our modern world is allowing us to do so? There is no way we would be able to even be eating food without being in the sun. We are so out of touch with nature that something as crazy as avoiding being outside seems normal. As with all fat soluble vitamins, vitamin synergy is very important here. Uh, I spoke about this in my liver is a superfood video the other week. If you are getting large amounts of vitamin D3 in the sun, it would make sense to replicate the same nutrition we would be getting from animal foods that we were hunting while being out in the sun. This would have resulted in us obtaining large amounts of fat soluble vitamins from animal foods as well as the sun. Uh, you have vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K2, you have vitamin D3 from the sun, you have the water soluble B and C vitamins and animal foods, you have all the minerals, all the elements, all of the fatty acids. Just being out in nature, hunting animals, being in the sun is all you need to be in optimal health. If that is not telling us what we should be doing, what type of diet we should be following, I don't know what is. So if you guys want to learn more about vitamin D3, definitely check out some of the other YouTube videos I've done in the past. Uh, one video is titled, I'm a Greek God. Uh, I do have a video on tanning beds as well. Uh, there is a vitamin D3 supplement on my Amazon shop uh, that I will link down in the comments below. Uh, I will be selling Frankie's Ball Grease within a month, uh, my natural moisturizing cream that would help you tan. If you guys have noticed, I have a very even tan. Uh, people usually have duck feet. Uh, this is because uh, my moisturizing cream allows me to tan evenly. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, if you can, please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and share the video if you can. I'm not outside here sweating my guts out for nothing, boys and girls. If you guys would like to support me further, uh, I've recently launched Frankie's Free Range Meat. My goal is to provide you guys with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods. You know, my vision has always been to improve the health of everyone. And if we can look pretty as hell and feel good doing it, why not? So go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Uh, we recently added a uh, cod liver. Uh, that's an excellent source of all the fat soluble vitamins, uh, super affordable, probably the cheapest way to get high quality animal nutrition. Uh, we did the caviar video a couple days ago. So if you guys want to learn more about the mission, uh, the future of Frankie's Free Range Meat, uh, you can check out the website, frankiesfreerangemeat.com, as well as the YouTube channel that I will link down in the description below. Again, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Enjoy the rest of your week and try to get some sun.